Thank you very much for coming. Um, we would like to get started. Um, my name is Lynn Grayson. I'm the Chicago Bar Association president and welcome to the Vanguard Awards for 2022. I'd like to welcome all the members of our bench and bar, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and we're so happy that you're here and we're so happy that we've got an opportunity to do this in person today. I have to tell you that when I think about this, we're happy that you could join us and support the work of lawyers and judges who through their efforts assure that law serves a wider group of our citizens by creating greater access to the legal system for those who historically felt shelf out, they are truly answering the highest call of our profession. This annual celebration of diversity and inclusion gathers organizations of lawyers from across Chicagoland. It is unique and it's unparalleled in the United States and it's something that the Chicago Bar Association started a number of years ago. The CBA has been sponsoring this event since 1998 and it's one of the things that makes me proud to be the CBA president this year and to be a member of the Chicago legal community. Another thing that makes me proud to be the CBA president is the many opportunities we have to collaborate with all of you and to work together on things that are important for our justice system in the state of Illinois. And with that, I'd like to ask your indulgence and take this opportunity um, to call someone up to the stage to talk a little bit about the Illinois Judges Association Declaration of Judicial Independence um, she's going to say a few words about what's going on and what we've asked each of your bar associations to do to support this important effort. With that, I'd ask Judge Anna to step up here and um, give us a few comments. Uh, thank you, President Grayson, for inviting us here. My name is Judge Anna Demacopoulos, and I'm here on behalf of the Illinois Judges Association. The Illinois Judges Association is comprised of over 1,200 judges, both currently sitting and retired judges across the state of Illinois. As we all know that protecting independent judiciary is the more important now than ever. In preparing for today's presentation, I had no idea what our community would be dealing with today. The judiciary serves as a co-equal branch of government that's responsible for protecting the rights of all people. But our right to equal treatment is meaningless without an independent court system. The Illinois Judges Association plans to emphasize the importance of judicial independence through an initiative called the Declaration of Judicial Independence, and it is an education initiative. As members of the legal profession, we all play a role in protecting judicial decision making from outside influences that attempt to sway or disrupt judicial proceedings and exert pressure on individual judges. In performing our duties and abiding by the Constitution, judges are increasingly vulnerable to attacks that not only place the judicial independence at risk, but our democracy as well. Personal attacks aimed at embarrassing, harassing, and coercing judges have become more frequent especially in the retaliation of unpopular rulings or in upcoming elections. In some cases, these attacks are designed to unfairly impact one's right to a fair hearing. And in other times, these attempts to influence judicial elections by misinforming and misleading the public about a judge's record or their qualifications. We can all agree that we don't always agree with each other. And not everyone is going to agree with every judicial ruling. But those who ridicule a judge's legitimacy because of their background, their ethnicity, their race, their sexual orientation is just not acceptable in our democracy. It threatens the retaliation for unfavorable rulings and contributes only to public mistrust for the third branch of government that is usually their last line of defense. The upcoming 2022 election cycle includes state Supreme Court races, appellate court races, circuit court races, and votes for the retention of judges on the ballot across the state of Illinois. All of you in this room that are members of bar associations that do judicial evaluations, spend an enormous amount of time and resources evaluating judges. And voters should evaluate judges based on their integrity, professionalism, temperament, experience, and commitment to public service, fairness, and impartiality. 
We embrace that. And we think that the judicial evaluation process is one that should be publicized more. This will be another platform for you to get your message out to the voters in your community. The Judicial Independence Education Initiative is comprised of a one-page declaration of judicial independence and a series of small video announcements that deal with common issues raised during the election cycle. The Illinois Judges Association is grateful to the Chicago Bar Association, the Illinois State Bar Association, and the American Board of Trial Advocates who have already signed on as partners in this initiative. We are hopeful that all the bar associations across the state join us in this initiative so that we can best inform the voters and members of our community. If you need more information, please feel free to contact me personally or the Illinois Judges Association at info at IJA.org. We'll be more than happy to come out to your bar association and present and answer all of your questions. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity and congratulations to all of the recipients. It's so good to see mentors, former colleagues, former students here and congratulations. This is an incredible event and thank you for the opportunity. So thanks to all of you um, for the public service announcement and letting us do that. It's an important topic and I hope all of you will, will consider it. All of the bar presidents that are here today, I hope you'll go back to your boards and, and think about this um, and give Judge Anna a call and learn more about it. <laughs> Moving on and picking up where I left off, this award ceremony has become one of the highlights of the Chicago legal community. It provides all of us a focal point to celebrate the accomplishments of lawyers and organizations, and it fosters greater understanding and collaboration between all of our <laughs> diverse bar associations. You will see that our list of participating bar associations has grown since 1998. This year, there are 14 bar associations participating in our ceremony. In addition to the Chicago Bar Association, the participating bar associations and their presidents are the Advocates Society and President Andrea Cosgrove, the Arab American Bar Association and President Nura Yunaki, the Asian Bar American Bar Association of Greater Chicago and President Ellen Park, the Black Women Lawyers Association of Greater Chicago and President Makia Crossley, the Chinese American Bar Association of Greater Chicago and President Jonathan Yee, the Cook County Bar Association and President Cannon Lambert, the Decalogue Society of Lawyers and President Mara Huff, Filipino American Lawyers Association of Chicago and President Melanie Matias, the Hispanic Lawyers Association of Illinois and President Andrea Ballard, Lagbap and President Moses Suarez, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican Bar Association, excuse me, of Illinois and President Jose Padira, the South Asian Bar Association of Chicago and President Avani Patel, and the Women's Bar Association of Illinois and its president, Lauren Tucker. Tucky, Lauren, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm looking right at you. Um, each bar association has the opportunity to choose its own honoree that it feels has been particularly meaningful and has had a great impact on its members in the bar community. And those are the general criteria of enhancing the legal profession in the Chicago land area. It's my privilege now to introduce each award recipient. Please learn more about these honorees by reading the bios that are available on site and the materials that you received at the door this afternoon. Also, as we've done in past years, the honorees have recorded their marks. They will be introduced in alphabetical order by last name. With that, we'll start with the first group of five. And I'll just give you a little rundown of what we're gonna do. We're gonna introduce two groups of five, one group of four. Um, you'll, I'll make the introductions very brief and announce their names and the award nominees. We'll hear the recorded comments and each of the award recipients and their presidents will be invited up to take a picture um, at the end of those three separate groupings. So please bear with us. There are a lot of people here and this is an important time and I appreciate everyone's patience as we work through um, making sure that everybody gets the recognition they deserve today. 
So our first group begins with Deanne Brown, the Women's Bar Association of Illinois. Ann Chen, the Asian Bar Association of Greater Chicago. Yuri Clark, the Cook County Bar Association. Dijani Desai, the South Asian Bar Association of Chicago. And Judge Grace Stickler, the Decalogue Society of Lawyers. And with that, we'll hear um, the recorded comments. I'm truly grateful to the Women's Bar Association of Illinois for nominating me for the 2022 Vanguard Award. A decade ago, I had the privilege of serving as the president of the Women's Bar Association, and it was truly one of the highlights of my legal career. Receiving the Vanguard Award is another high point, and I thank the Chicago Bar Association for organizing this exciting event, which brings together so many diverse bar associations. I also want to thank my law firm, Hughes, Sokol, Pierce, Resnick, and Dim, for its unwavering support of me and the Women's Bar. The Vanguard Award honors individuals who have made the law and legal profession more accessible to and reflective of the community at large. While I have worked hard to further this mission in my career, representing employees who have been the victims of discrimination in the workplace, the Women's Bar has committed itself to advancing this mission for over a century. The Women's Bar was founded to promote the interests and welfare of women lawyers, and also to aid in the enactment of legislation for the common good and in the administration of justice. The Women's Bar has done this through a variety of programs. For example, this bar year, the Women's Bar Association has revived the Willpower Political Action Committee to advocate for paid family leave, including a day of lobbying. Paid leave means not having to choose between job and family. It means working people of all ages can get the support they need to receive and provide critical care to their family members. Long before diversity, equity, and inclusion began to receive the attention it rightfully enjoys today, the Women's Bar was committed to increasing diversity and advancement in the legal profession. Whether by organizing a top-notch mentorship program, teaching women how to become rainmakers, or providing women the support they need to become partners in their law firms, to be elected to the bench, and to become supervisors in their government jobs, the Women's Bar Association has repeatedly demonstrated its commitment to the promotion of women in the law, thereby making it more reflective of the committee and the community at large. I cherish the personal and professional relationships I have gained through the Women's Bar, and I applaud its continued mission to advance the interests of women in the law. Thank you again to the Women's Bar Association of Illinois for nominating me for this very special honor. Thank you to the Chicago Bar Association for this Vanguard Award and for all that the CBA does for the Chicago legal community and beyond. And I also want to thank the Asian American Bar Association for honoring me with the sustained recognition. So many attorneys I've admired or have helped me personally in my career or have helped pave the way for a more inclusive legal profession have been past Vanguard awardees so I am humbled to be in such meaningful company. As a young attorney starting out in Chicago, I remember hearing stories from older Asian American attorneys. They told me that when they were starting out, there were only a handful of them in the city. And at that time, even those of them who graduated from top law schools had a hard time getting hired. I think about how they worked hard, mentored us, and worked to diversify the profession so that today, the Asian American legal community proudly consists of leaders like general counsels, law firm partners, nonprofit leaders, and judges and elected officials. We are part of the regular fabric of the legal community, and I know the story is not unique to us, and yet there's a lot more work to do. I challenge myself every day, as well as my fellow attorneys, to be intentional in furthering diversity, equity, inclusion in both our professional and our personal lives, and to create opportunities for others. And it is also important to me that we connect and support each other across all of our groups. I look forward to this event every year because the CBA brings us together and showcases the amazing work that our lawyers are doing individually and collectively. We can truly make meaningful progress when we work together and seek to understand our unique and our common shared experiences and challenges. Thank you again to the CBA, to ABBA, and especially to my family, including my mother, father, brother, and sister-in-law for always supporting me and my aspirations. Hello, 
I am humbled to have been chosen as this year's CCBA Vanguard Award recipient. In 1914, the year the CCBA was formed, this diverse collaborative event could not have taken place. The society of that era would not have allowed it. The seeds of the Cook County Bar Association were planted in 1896 when 32 black lawyers began to meet to plan protests against discrimination in hotels, theaters, and restaurants, and to address school segregation and inequality in the judicial system. The rich 108-year-old history of the CCBA includes the development and engagement in a variety of programs to advance the legal profession, and most importantly, the Black community. Members of the Cook County Bar Association were among the founders of the National Bar Association, the nation's oldest and largest network of predominantly African-American attorneys and judges. One of our most significant contributions to the community is developing an organized system for the fair and impartial evaluation of judicial candidates in collaboration with other bar associations, informing the Alliance of Bar Associations for a Judicial Screening. The work of our JEC does not go unnoticed. Our lawyers in the community committee continues to provide invaluable service by engaging in food, clothing, and toy distribution programs. In addition, it engages in community outreach forums and mentoring programs. In cooperation with many community organizations, the CCBA Foundation Legal Clinic has been serving the legal needs of our community for many years. CCBA members have witnessed and been intimately involved in the progress of our local and national community. Our past member, Charles E. Freeman, was the first Black Justice of the Illinois Supreme Court. Our current member and past president, P. Scott Neville, currently serves as the second Black Justice on the Illinois Supreme Court. Our past member, Barack Obama, was the first Black president of the United States. Following this great achievement, the first Black and female vice president, Kamala Harris, took office. The Black community was hopeful for the progress of social justice when Thurgood Marshall was sworn in as the first justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. We are now elated and proud to see Judge Katanji Brown Jackson confirmed as the first black woman elevated to the United States Supreme Court. Once again, we have hope. I am honored to have been allowed to contribute my small part in providing service to the community and to the Cook County Bar Association. My life has been enriched with, by the friendships and feeling of family from this great organization. Finally, I thank all of you attending this event representing each of your individual bar associations. Getting to know each other and working together is the only way we can reach our common goal of attaining a better, more inclusive society. Thank you. I'm incredibly honored to be nominated by the South Asian Bar Association for the CBA's Vanguard Award today. I have so much gratitude to join a group of past recipients and honorees today whom I truly admire the most in this profession. Standing at the intersection of public service and diversity, I firmly believe I have a duty to make the law and legal profession fair and equitable for women, people of color, the underserved, and the underprivileged. The South Asian Bar Association has been an integral part of that commitment. Saba embodies the nation's social fabric. It's an organization made up of immigrants, children of immigrants, and so many who share the same story as I do. Yes, my parents came here to the United States from Kolkata, West Bengal with $100 in their pocket. They sought the American dream and they built a life where I and so many others that look like me can stand here before you today. Despite the trials embedded in the immigrant story, I am proud to be part of an organization that honors their bravery, ingenuity, 
perseverance, and love, allowing people like my family to live a life of immense possibilities. It may be cliche to say that you're sharing an award with others, but for me, it's truly heartfelt. Any work that distinguishes me has been done in partnership with Saba, the Advisory Council, mentors and friends in the judiciary, my fellow colleagues in public service, and with the boundless support of my husband, mom, dad, and brother. Today is a signal to me that I've done at least a few things right, but most importantly, that I will continue my commitment to serve the community in which I work, the community in which I live, and the community from which I came. Thank you to Saba President Avani Patel, the Saba Board, and to the CBA for this honor. I am so honored to receive the 2022 Vanguard Award as a Decalogue Society of Lawyers honoree. I am especially proud of this honor considering the admiration and respect I have for this organization. Although Decalogue is proudly the nation's oldest Jewish bar association, it has always been committed to inclusivity in membership, leadership, and charity. Welcoming those outside the Jewish faith to join and work alongside the society in its charitable and educational endeavors. In fact, in 2020, the society elected its first black and first Christian president, attorney Patrick Danqua John, a leader in promoting inclusivity. The Decalogue Society recognizes the value of fostering and maintaining relationships with those outside of one's own ethnicity and religion and sets an example for the legal profession to consciously combat discrimination in all facets of our work. The society further works to expand the legal profession by supporting scholarship for law students and providing mentorship and resources through student chapters at eight law schools statewide. The society gives back to the residents of Illinois at large through the work of their active committees, including the Social Action Committee and the Committee Against Anti-Semitism, and by hosting events and CLE classes free to the public. I deeply thank the Decalogue Society, not only for honoring me with this award today, but for all they have done to shape my own career and the careers and lives of others in the community. So let's move on to our second grouping. The next group of honorees include Donna Pettit, the Arab American Bar Association of Illinois, Judge Hansen, the Filipino American Lawyers Association of Chicago, Inuzi Okafor, the Black Lawyers Association of Greater Chicago, Judge Quinn Lagback, and Jeanette Shalka, the Advocate Society. And with that, please listen to these recorded comments again. Thank you to President Nuri Yanaki, the Arab American Bar Association, and the Chicago Bar Association for this incredible honor. To receive the Vanguard Award for making the law and the legal profession more accessible and reflective of the community is very special to me. I'm the daughter of Jordanian immigrants. I was born and grew up in Chicago and attended Chicago public schools. I'm the first person in my family to attend college. I knew no one who looked like me who was a lawyer. Recently, I found my law school application essay. In it, I wrote about my Arab heritage and mentioned Danny Thomas, another Arab American. I wrote about an inscription in the dome of St. Jude's Children's Hospital. It is a Khalil Gibran quote. He who denies his heritage has no heritage. I've always been proud of my heritage, but at 22, I wrote about having to overcome negative stereotypes about Arabs. I said that I wanted to be a lawyer, to represent Arabs in a way that reflected who I knew them to be. 
strong, smart, and incredibly resilient. As a lawyer, wife, and mother, I try to do my best to represent our rich Arab heritage. As president of the Arab American Bar, I worked with incredibly talented attorneys who represent our community well every day. I've also had the honor of working with the other diverse bar groups who represent the best of their communities. Reflecting back on my 22 year old self, she would be sad to hear that we are still dealing with unfair stereotypes and biases, but I believe she would be happy to know that she is not alone. Today, we are honoring a group of incredible attorneys who are all working to make the law and legal profession more accessible and reflective of the community at large. Congratulations and thank you for all that you do. A special thanks to the CBA for making this event open to all diverse bar groups. It only takes one person to ask, who else can we include? And we appreciate the CBA doing so. The future is bright. Good evening. Thank you to the Chicago Bar Association for your continued commitment in the Vanguard Awards in recognizing those who have made the law and legal profession more accessible to and reflective of the community at large. And thank you to Fala for nominating me to receive this prestigious award. Really, this award goes to Fala. The organization has been long committed to fostering our Filipino connections in the legal community. At a time when Asian Americans throughout the country became victims of hate crimes, Fala combated racism as a partner in the Asian Justice Rally in Chicago and provided education through CLE opportunities in programs like Breaking Down Our Silos. FALA continues to celebrate our Filipino heritage by offering programs that highlight Filipino music, food, and comedy through their Culture Connections series. Since I have yet to master any Filipino cooking, I have taken a different approach. Since my election in 2014, I have utilized my background in the law and made it a priority to support young lawyers in their aspirations to become leaders, as well as lawyers in their aspirations to get to the bench. I've done so in various ways, which range from mentoring young lawyers to helping lawyers navigate their way to the bench. In 2020, I created the Asian American Judges Association of Illinois, which includes Asian Americans, state and federal judges across the state of Illinois. Having a judiciary that reflects the diversity of the communities we serve is extremely important to me. I hope you will be able to uh, join me at the Asian American Bar Association Judicial Reception in May as we celebrate Asian American Heritage Month. A highlight will be immigration stories of several of our Cook County Asian American judges. I believe sharing our stories is a way to combat racism and support our diversity. The Asian American Judges Association has joined other minority judges associations to support those on the bench who are reflective of our community at large, as well as those that come after us. In light of this diversity and inclusivity, I am humbly honored to be a recipient of the Vanguard Award. Thank you again to Fala for your recognition of my work. I also want to thank my family for their continued to support me uh, throughout this whole time of my legal career, especially my time on the bench, because without them, I wouldn't be here accepting the Vanguard Award tonight. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Chinadu Okorafor. I would like to accept this wonderful Vanguard Award on behalf of my mom, Gozi Okorafor. My mom loved the law. I was a great advocate of justice. She sought to make the world a better place, and I believe she did. I am very proud of my mom's strength and courage. I am also happy to see her recognized and honored for being so amazing, because she was. Thank you, BWLA, for all your support during these times and also for nominating my mom for this recognition. My name is Jill Rose Quinn. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm the fourth openly transgender judge in the United States of America. Uh, I'm the first openly transgender judge in the state of Illinois. And I stand on the shoulders and I owe a debt of gratitude 
uh, to the three transgender judge, judges who came before me, Phyllis Fry of Houston, Texas, uh, Vicki Kowalkowski uh, of Oakland, California, Tracy Najeha of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And since I've been elected, there's a, there's a fifth transgender judge in Oakland, Cal, in uh, Sacramento, California, Andy Mudrick. Um, and that's the way revolutions start, uh, one by one. And I want to tell everyone out there, uh, to, for yourselves and for everyone you know, that I invite everyone to stand on my shoulders and stand up for yourselves and stand up for the rights of individuals everywhere uh, and do the best you can uh, to, to be everything you possibly can be. Um, I also want to thank uh, Lagback, uh, Chicago's LGBTQ plus inclusive organization for nominating me to receive this uh, award. Lagback has been a steadfast supporter uh, for me. Uh, it's been a uh, source of refuge, a source of strength for me. Uh, Lagback is unparalleled in its community outreach and its assistance of LGBTQ students uh, and its education efforts, <coughs> excuse me, in our community. I also wanna thank the legal community at large of the city of Chicago, largely for um, accepting me without question. I include the judicial community as well in that. Uh, Chicago is a great city for progressive thought and for uh, progress, uh, progressive minds, despite what you might run into on an individual basis. Uh, the people of Chicago are a no-nonsense group of people who are able to recognize uh, nonsense for what it is. Uh, I also wanna thank my wife, my daughter, my friends, my family who supported me. I wanna thank two individuals in particular at Lagback who uh, helped me and pushed me uh, and supported me through every step of the way. I also wanna thank every bully and narrow-minded bigot uh, who ever attacked me or made fun of me uh, or talked about me behind my back. Thank you for making me stronger and thank you for making me more steadfast. And thank you for making me more positive in my belief of myself. Um, I'm shocked sometimes when people tell me that they think I'm brave uh, because the truth of the matter is I, I do what I have to do. Um, and maybe that's bravery, but I, I'm not sure. Um, I, I am who I am and it's important uh, for me, just as important for everybody to be comfortable in their own skins and to assert uh, themselves. Um, I want everyone here to remember that uh, weakness can make you strong. Uh, your, your difference from other people makes you compassionate. It makes you the puzzle uh, piece that's so unique that only fits in the one spot where it can go. And belief in yourself makes you powerful. Um, Shakespeare said it best when he put the words um, in the mouth of a fool in Hamlet. He said, this above all to thine own self be true. Uh, be true to yourselves and uh, and fight for yourselves and fight for others. And again, uh, thank thank you for this this great recognition today. I am honored to join my fellow honorees as a Vanguard Award recipient. My life is rooted in building and participating in communities, and in particular, the legal and Polish communities. I have been fortunate to serve both of these groups through the Advocate Society. And I am very grateful that the Society picked me as its recipient for this award. The Advocate Society is not only involved with networking, offering continuing legal education, and building connections with the wider Polish community, but it also commits itself to access to justice by organizing volunteers for the Amicus Polonia Legal Clinic in conjunction with Chicago Volunteer Legal Services. My involvement with the Advocate Society led to my appointment to the Judicial Evaluation Committee of the Illinois State Bar Association. My fellow committee members, as well as ISBA staff members, work very hard to educate the public on the qualifications of candidates for judicial office. Please help bring visibility to this effort as electing ethical judges is critical to fostering a fair judicial system that serves everyone. Making sure that all have the best defense available should be everyone's goal. The fact that Katanji Brown Jackson, a former federal defender, will soon ascend to the Supreme Court is of huge significance. 
I was lucky to be able to spend my career with the Cook County Public Defender's Office, which does the very important work of ensuring due process and the right to effective counsel for all, no matter the charge nor the client. Working with clients as a public defender taught me the importance of second chances. Mistakes should not follow you for the rest of your life. Upon retiring, I was fortunate to seg into volunteering with the Expungement Help Desk organized by Evanston's James Moran Center. Helping people access expungement and other legal remedies is critical to opening doors for employment, housing, and other opportunities. The Moran Center takes a holistic approach that expands beyond the legal realm, connecting the youth of Evanston to broader social services that can provide life-changing opportunities. I encourage you to support this program and other partner organizations that are doing this very important work. Borrowing from a friend's recent Lenten reflection, we need to use our time in history to build a better world and to tear down the artificial barriers that seem to divide us. Access to justice is necessary to both. Thank you again, congratulations to my fellow honorees, and continue the good work. Our final group of honorees include Griselda Vega Samuel from the Hispanic Warriors Association of Illinois, Jamie Santana, the Puerto Rican Bar Association of Illinois, Elaine Sitt from the Chinese American Bar Association, and our own Howard Suskin from the Chicago Bar Association. Please join me in listening to their recorded comments. I am honored to be nominated by the Hispanic Lawyers Association of Illinois and privileged to be a recipient of the Chicago Bar Association's 2022 Vanguard Award. Thank you to the CBA for bringing together such an amazing group of advocates together this year. Since my return home to Chicago in 2018, the leadership of HLAI welcomed me with open arms and supported my work as the regional counsel for Maldives Midwest office. As a daughter of Mexican immigrants, becoming Maldives regional counsel was my dream job. Leading a team of professionals in ensuring the rights of all Latinos and our most vulnerable population, while an incredibly difficult task, has been exceptionally rewarding. From representing DACA recipients from unscrupulous corporations to advocating for the voting rights of Latinos in defiance of legislatures violating the Federal Voting Rights Act, we fight every day to give a voice to the voiceless. The future of, La of Latinos in the legal profession is a personal passion and a personal commitment to minority lawyers and students. So I appreciate the platform HLAI has provided me to facilitate that work. I always encourage students and professionals alike to participate in their local, state, and national bars, as it has always been an integral part of my career. Working to build a pipeline of future advocates that can represent and lead Latinos is critical to the growth and prosperity of our community, both locally and nationally. Helping to energize HLAI's Latina Commission by creating a space for Latina colleagues to provide mentorship and support for each other, hone our skills, and provide a sounding board for ideas has been particularly relevant, especially in the last two years. HLAI has built a special community of advocates that focus not just on working hard for our community, but also on the importance of self-care. I am honored to receive the 2020 Vanguard Award, but it is not one I have earned alone. I want to thank my parents and family for their hard work and sacrifice, to my husband for his love and support, and more importantly, for always pushing me to strive for excellence. And finally, to all of my friends and mentors, who without, who without their continued support, I would not be able to get through the tough days. Gracias. Good afternoon. I would like to start by thanking the CBA for this prestigious Vanguard Award and your endless commitment in serving the Chicagoland community. I would also like to thank the Puerto Rican Bar Association, Jose Padilla, its president, the executive board, and its members for selecting me 
in representing our organization and receiving such a prestigious honor. Furthermore, what an honor it is to be recognized with such a distinguished group of honorees and in joining our former recipients who in their own right are trailblazers in their respective community. Being one of the founding members of the Puerto Rican Bar Association, I'm delighted to report that we have remained dedicated to our purpose and mission. First, by providing legal advice to our workshops and our in-house referral service. Second, we have our feed to families every Christmas. This past year, we served well over 100 families in the Humboldt Park and Logan Square community, providing them with food, clothing, and toys for the children. What a labor of love. Third, by having to participate in the judicial process through the membership of the Alliance of the Bar Associations to ensure diverse representation on the bench. Fourth, participating with the lawyers in the classrooms, going to the various CPS high schools, speaking to the students, and sharing our individual experiences and struggles. This is not only enlightening, but gratifying. I make it a point to express to these young men and women that my goal and any goal is attainable. I use myself as an example and tell them my story as a high school dropout, going to the US Army for six years, obtaining my GED, associate and bachelor's degree, and following my dream to become an attorney. My hope and desire in speaking with the student is to plant the seed of si se puede, yes you can, meaning if I did it, so can you. More so, more so now than ever do I see the need for us, the bar organizations, to go out into your community and reach out to the youth and provide them with the needed guidance and direction, especially during these tumultuous times. I believe there isn't a better reward in life than service, and I strive to live my life as such. So my fellow colleagues, let us continue our Vanguard mission to ensure that those in need of legal representation will have immediate and unwavering access to the legal system, regardless of their race, gender, religion, financial status, and sexual orientation. Finally, I would like to thank my family for the love, support, and encouragement. My wife, Mylene, for her 30 years of unselfish love. My son, Jaime Jr., who just completed his first year at the UIC School of Law, following his pop's footsteps, my daughter, Selena, who lives in New York City following her dreams as an actress, and my youngest daughter, Katerina, who's completing her bachelor's at Central Michigan in fashion design. I've been truly blessed with such a wonderful family. Again, gracias, and thank you so much for honoring me with this award. I thank the Chinese American Bar Association of Greater Chicago for nominating me and the Chicago Bar Association for including me among this year's recipients of the Vanguard Award. I am humbled and grateful to be in such distinguished company and I congratulate my fellow awardees. I'm also overwhelmed that the bar associations have found my achievements worthy of recognition. So much so that I would rather highlight another law related achievement that promises to give a bigger benefit to the Chinese American and greater Asian American community of our city and state and on a bigger scale than I could ever hope to reach. As long as stereotypes of Asians in America as sojourners, foreigners, and non-citizen others remain commonplace, education is vital for future generations to learn about the perspectives and contributions of Asian Americans and to experience a more inclusive and comprehensive understanding of American history. For a short time in a previous life, before I went to law school, I was a teacher. So of course, I believe in the power of education. Last year, a coalition of Asian American sponsors succeeded in making the TEAACH Act law. The acronym stands for Teaching Equitable Asian American community history, and it makes Illinois the first state to require that Asian American history is taught in our schools. The TEACH Act was also motivated by a rise in hate crimes against Asian Americans. Considering the challenges and dangers 
of the last two years in Asian American communities and toward individuals of Asian descent across the nation, there is no better time for this legislation to go into effect. It is a wonderful example of the growing clout and critical mass of Asian American legislators in Springfield and a long awaited asset to our state. Thank you to the Chicago Bar Association for nominating me for the Vanguard Award and congratulations to all the other nominees. During my nearly 40 years as a lawyer, I've had the opportunity and privilege to observe the important impact of the CBA from a variety of perspectives. As a brand new lawyer, I became an investigator for the Judicial Evaluation Committee, and later on, a member of its hearing and appeals panels. I saw firsthand the hard work and diligence of the committee in informing voters of the qualifications of our judicial candidates. Over the years, I worked my way up the ladder of several practice service committees, including serving as chair of the Class Action Committee, Financial Services Committee, Securities Law Committee, and Bench and Bar Committee. I observed the tremendous value of the many CLE programs the CBA's committee sponsor, as well as the camaraderie these committees foster, bringing together lawyers from both the plaintiff and defense bars to work together and promote civility in our profession. I also had the great opportunity to serve on the CBA's board of managers and observe the board's role advocating for our profession in legislation and public policy initiatives. And finally, for the last five years, I've had the tremendous um, uh, honor of serving as the CBA's general counsel. In that role, I've observed the tremendous leadership of our former executive director, Terry Murphy, his fabulous successor executive director, Beth McMean, and our CFO, Mark Cellini. They, together with our phenomenal president, Lynn Grayson, and the CBA's terrific staff, shepherded the CBA through the challenges of the pandemic, and now are leading us to even more success as we reopen. In two years, the CBA will celebrate its 150th milestone anniversary. As I look to our CBA Executive Committee and its rising leaders, Tim Tomasic, Ray Koenig, Katie Liss, and John Chakota, I know that the future of the CBA is very strong and bright. I encourage all of you to get even more involved with the CBA and take advantage of everything it has to offer. It is truly an extraordinary organization that has served the legal community with great distinction. To be the CBA's nominee for the Vanguard Award is a tremendous honor, and I'm very grateful. My congratulations to our 14 deserving award recipients. We all appreciate that the Vanguard, I think we all appreciate that the Vanguard Award recognizes that we're stronger together. What's important is that we continue to work together, collaborate together, and make sure that our Chicago legal community is welcoming to one and all, and that access to justice remains a priority. And I know working with all the diverse bar associations um, is the way to get that done. So thanks to all of you for participating. Thanks to all of you for attending. Thanks to everyone that is watching this program virtually. And again, congratulations to all of our award recipients. Congratulations to all of our bar associations for the good work you do. And let's give our award recipients another round of applause. Thank you again for helping us get back to normal and in-person at the CBA.